So a couple years ago, I made this video comparing green to Pixel to uh, Negative Lab Pro. And at the time, uh, it was just like a different tool for film conversion and stuff. I don't think it actually exists anymore. I, I couldn't find it on the links and stuff. It seems to be dead. But there's a lot of people and who have told me in the comments that they enjoyed that because it was a it was not a Lightroom based tool. And I, for whatever reason, they didn't. I mean, I totally understand not wanting to pay for more subscription stuff. I think Lightroom is very worth what it costs. But um, and I also think Make the Lab Pro is still kind of the gold standard as far as ease and cost and quality as far as it comes to film conversion. But that said, I thought I would spend today investigating a bunch of other options that exist that don't require that Lightroom or Native Lab Pro and other ways that you could convert your film scans. So let's get started. For all of these tests, I rescanned one set of six images from Sicily from some of these photos at like a little palace thing. Um, one set of six photos from Iceland from a snowy scene. And then these set two sets, two photos of medium format from uh, Andrew and Carly's wedding last winter. So I kind of wanted to have three very different types of photos um, to be able to compare all the way through. So I'm going to start with a couple of free options. The very first one here is the Lomo Digitaliza Lab. The Lomo Digitaliza used to be these like masks that held your film and I, I own them. They're somewhere. Um, and they're really helpful for, they were the first ones you could like use to scan sprockets if you were doing it on like a flatbread and stuff like this. But Lomography has then also rolled out this tool that does super simple conversions. So the way that the Lomo system works here is you open up the website, which um, is linked down there. Um, and you just click this little upload button and navigate to wherever your photos are stored. One thing to note with this particular one, it only works with JPEGs. So uh, when I was taking those photos on my Canon R6, uh, I made sure that I took both JPEGs and, and RAWs. And so all the other tools I use will use RAW, but this one will use JPEG, but it's the same exposure, the same photo, just was saved in both types. So all you have to do is pull up here and pull up the first, pull up a photo. And you know, that doesn't look great. But it's a super, it's a super duper simple system. So you can see it turns off, turns on, and it kind of turns off the conversion. This first button here is the dark, and all you have to do is find the darkest point in the photo. And so as this is kind of uncropped, I think probably the darkest photo, probably right around there, probably that leg of that, that armoire or whatever. And then this one, you find the high, the brightest point, which is probably here in the window. And yeah, yeah. Now it might be clipping a little bit, and if it's clipping, you can just kind of do that and it pulls it back just a little bit so it kind of makes it not quite so bright. Same thing with the shadows here. I could make it more contrasty and darker and goes in just like that. And then you can do a little bit of um, fine tuning and stuff. But honestly, this one kind of like requires this conversion here and then editing in another piece of software. So I don't really worry about that all that much. If you have black and white, you can use this tool. This would reset it. And then all I do is you just click download and it automatically downloads into there into your downloads folder with this like converted JPEG whatever folder. And yeah, uh, I have of the 14 photos here, it takes me about, about two or three minutes to do all of the photos and then they're converted and ready to go. Now I'm going to use Lightroom just because this is what I use. <laughs> so uh, that's it. If you have any other like photo management software, bridge, dark, table, like when in anything else that you're using, even just like regular folders on your computer. But this is just what I use. So it's the easiest one for my brain to work. Um, and you can see all the photos in here. I felt like they weren't quite perfect off the bat. Um, a lot of these ones in like the snow were, uh, were like the, the color cast was wrong. And so I had to kind of fix it a little bit. Uh, and you can kind of see all the images. I don't know, they look pretty good. And for a, thing, for a tool that doesn't cost any money whatsoever, it's not bad. And at the end, we'll compare everything and see how they look. So uh, one definitely one advantage of using this Lomo tool is that it is free. It is extremely easy. It just does a really quick conversion and you're ready to go. Um, downsides is that uh, consistency can be a little bit tricky, especially between scenes. It is really nice because if you're moving from like, if you have five photos that are all shot at the same time and were exposed about the same, then it, if nothing has to change, it's going to be super consistent because it's like, 
here's your settings from last time. Do those still work? Great, just hit download. And sometimes it's just like upload, download, upload, download, and it looks really good. But once you change scenes and you're like manually picking those like uh, shadow points and those high points, then sometimes consistency can be a little bit tricky. The next tool that we're gonna pull up is something from my own past. Back in 2018, uh, I made this how I scanned photos. And this is before I started using Native Lab Pro. This is when I was in a different house and Lena was still an infant. So life's changed a bit. Um, but with that, I made this Photoshop action and they use that to do my conversions. So it's free, it's still available. You can get it in the link below if you want. Again, totally free. If you have Photoshop, it'll work. Um, and we can use that in order to convert some of the photos. So I'm just gonna open up Photoshop here and so that took about a minute and a half to do this photo. So it took about, in order to do all 14 photos, it took 20-ish minutes or so to convert them and make them, make them look good. One thing that is nice is just because you are already in Photoshop, you can easily use something like the Spot Healing Tool, which is the best tool for dust removal. There we go. And I usually just export these as JPEGs. So hitting Command, Option, Shift, W um, on a Mac. It's right, it's right there, I wrote it out. But then I usually just save it as a JPEG because if I save these as TIFF files or um, Photoshop documents, they get to be like almost a gigabyte, which is just like way too big for one photo. So I just export it as a JPEG. Once it's exported, I already did. I just don't save this and let it go. Similar to the Lomo tools, because this is a one-to-one -one image base, uh, it does make consistency a little bit tricky, which is definitely a thing that I find to be a lot of uh, very true across any of these tools that use Photoshop and are like one-off editors. Like you can learn to be kind of consistent because you're doing the same thing all the time, but it's not quite the same as being able to see and make minor adjustments by seeing, oh, this photo is a little bit different because you're not working in batch, you're working image by image by image. Photoshop-based conversion tool that I want to talk about is Negmaster. Now, I'm not going to be able to pull up any, um, I'm not going to be able to do direct comparisons of this because uh, I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend $80 in buying it right now. Um, I have used it in the past, um, and so I can't speak to how it works, or at least how it worked then. Again, teams are always continuing to move these things, so it might have improved in the stuff, and it was extremely power, ex extremely powerful, really good correction tools, really good at having like all the options and the the science behind it is very sound. It was made by someone who's be a lab tech and really knows their stuff. That said, because it is Photoshop based, uh, I again say, ran into those same struggles of pure uh, getting things to be super consistent. I know he has also been running, they have been releasing other tools that are either built into Bridge itself or built into Lightroom itself for conversion. And I don't have any experience with those, but those are other things that are worth looking into. Honestly, really powerful, really knows your stuff. Um, definitely a thing to look into. So now I'm gonna move out of Photoshop-based conversion tools and into standalone apps. The first standalone app I'm gonna talk about is FilmLab. FilmLab is a, it's exactly that. It's a, it's a small app that's designed to make your conversions. They have both a mobile version and a desktop version um, that's designed to make it nice and easy and fast. I think like their goal really that they've, it seems to be is that they're trying to make this be a really simple program that doesn't do a whole lot in order to kind of speed through. This is a little bit similar to the Loma Digitaliza option in that they're trying to not do a lot so then you have a secondary program that would do the finalizing. So I've installed it over here and I have all the photos that I'm going to. So I'm just gonna take these photos here and throw them in to the tool. And right off the bat, you can see it does a pretty decent job. One thing that is interesting is that it's the goal of this is not necessarily to make your photos based on what they would look on a computer screen, but trying to make them match more the RFA4 look of what the color printer would look like or like the, the, the real digital prints. So now I'm gonna kind of go through and edit up these photos as much as I can here in this program. So the next tool I'm gonna to pull out 
out he pull up here is a very new one called Ansel. This is one I just learned about uh, through an Instagram ad. Um, and so I've installed it here, tried it with a couple other stuff. And so I'm installing or loading the photos. So once they're loaded, you just click on import images and then pop up here. One thing that's super cool is that it builds in to the import here, uh, how you put in your metadata for these particular photos. So they were negatives. Now these are all different, so I probably shouldn't do this, but I could say 35 and you know, Vision 3 500T and with my Leica, or yeah, I can probably change those and stuff. I'm just gonna do it for the all. And then you hit import and it loads them all in there. But I do really enjoy that, that ability to like knock that kind of information off right off the bat. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's happening, why those aren't. I've loaded other RAWs in the past, but for some reason the new ones won't. I would say, I think this program is very new. It just came out um because like the help section to the website is still on github so i think that there's still some bugs being worked out in this um then as far as conversion goes you pop it in here you click on the one you want to do you go over here to the convert tab and it loads and it gets in there it does the flip and then down here you can adjust the various colorations of the let's go to the cyan and red magenta and green and blue and yellow casts um that said, this tool doesn't have like an auto thing. Um, has this help you rotate, which is really nice, but there's not like a color picker. There's not a cropper um, in there. It does have some more fine tuning stuff, which is really nice, especially when it comes to like adjusting your midtones or like basically this thing here acts kind of like a, like a tone curve. And then you can adjust your exposures and your brightness contrast, clarity, saturation, and then it has a color grading tool very similar to what you see in Lightroom. As it just doesn't have like an eyedropper or some sort of like an auto option to begin with, um, it's really hard to fine tune and like start from nowhere. If you really know what you're doing, it's probably really cool. Um, also down here, the last one, it does have a dust and scratch removal tool built in, which is a nice tool to have that built in, it's super simple theoretically. It also isn't working well, honestly, I just feel like this program isn't quite ready yet. Um, the ideas are there. It's just, it's not done. Um, and so hopefully the people who are running that can, I don't know, get another version out there because there's on to some good ideas. They're just, it's not fully fleshed out yet. So then the last tool we're gonna look at here is one called Darktable. Now Darktable is kind of a, is basically an open source version of Lightroom. And in that it does a lot of the same things. Um, and it probably does a lot more because people keep adding settings to it and stuff. That said, it's probably also a little bit more complicated. I don't know, maybe it's not complicated once you get it. Um, and once you use it a lot, but off the, right off the bat from a Lightroom user, it definitely is a little bit tricky to me. Um, so I'm just gonna pick the little section called Nega Doctor. And it's, you do this little thing where it pulls it off of the film base. There we go. Now. So one thing that's kind of cool about this is so right now off the bat, it creates this like, I'm gonna pull, we'll find the shadows based on the whole image. And then we're gonna find the highlights based on the whole image which kind of like builds off of those. You can go in and find more like closely, something like that. And then from there, go into your normal editing tools to find how to make it look better. Honestly though, I could spend a lot of time on this and it's not gonna look great. All right, so I got everything on the computer here and we can look at all of the differences. Um, I wasn't able to get anything usable out of Ansel, so I'm, it's not even gonna be included here. Like I said, I think that tool is on its way, but it's not ready yet, so I'm not even gonna compare them. But we have the, th the options here <laughs> and kind of the same thing goes for the dark table ones. I got a couple exports, but you'll see really quickly that those aren't great. So mostly we're looking at the comparison here between the Digital Lisa, the Film Lab, uh, my my little action thingy, and then also I have some some that I just ran through Naked Lab Pro, and we can just compare them. 
So I know that this whole thing is not using Lightroom, but we're going to use Lightroom to look at them because that's what I do. Um, first off the bat, let's find, let's pick. So we can look at these all nice and big in there. Honestly, in this case, I feel like the, obviously the one from Darktable looks like garbage and I could not figure out how to make it look better. So I'm just gonna make that go away. Um, frankly, I'm kind of disappointed. I don't feel like the the one in Negative Lab Pro looks that great. I, maybe it's just a little bit cool. I, but that said, it's non-descriptive. So I can just go in here and I could really quickly warm that thing up and change it. Um, the one here from Digitalize it looks really good. Like you can see that I, I did do it, do get what I wanted to maintain the highlights and the shadows. That said, um, this photo is not untouched. I came in and I had to do a little bit of shadow work. So if I reset it, that's what it looks like when it came in from the Digitalize the system. And then I had to do a little bit of work here in Lightroom to get it to look even close to what I was looking for. Like I said, when I was doing the scanning on that one, it definitely is kind of a two tool setup in that it does a conversion really simply and really quickly, but then you definitely need another tool to do your conversions. You can do it even on your phone though. So you could download that there and then work through something like Lightroom Mobile or Snapseed or any of those kind of things just to actually just edit the photo. <clears throat> I would say here, the, this is the version here with This is the version here with my little tool. It might be, maybe it's a little bit too saturated. Um, and then this last one using the did the film lab. I feel like a lot of the work coming out of the film lab looks kind of like filmy and not like how film actually looks, but kind of like very vibey. And I don't know if it just doesn't feel super authentic to what I think film actually looks like. Um, I can go in here and let's look through another image. So let's take this one here of Carly. And so I believe I have all five versions here. So I have <clears throat> Negative Lab straight out of the gate, Dark Table, uh, Digitalize, um, Photoshop accent, Action, and uh, Film Lab. And like I said, very, Film vibey, um, did probably the the one here in the Digitalize is a little bit crispy once it got, went through everything, and maybe again I did a little bit of work in the development module here in Lightroom on this one, so maybe we need to pull that down and maybe it's too saturated, so we need to pull that back a bit. Um, again, I just don't understand how you could work without Lightroom, but uh, and then this original one is probably very true to film. That said, I probably convert this to a TIFF or something and do a little bit more work with it. Um, I just try to leave it pretty pretty standard on here. Honestly, I think my, <laughs> my preset one looks the best. <laughs> um, so let's kind of look at them. I want to go back and I want to look at each one of these as like a, a, a set. Um, so you can see these are the ones that came out of Dark Table. These all just look like absolute trash. Just a waste of my time. Could I get better? Probably, but it would take a lot of time and a whole different system. I'm not gonna learn it. Here's the ones from the Digitalize. Honestly, these look pretty good. They look fine. Um, and if you're looking for a free option, uh, this is worth the cost. So we can look and see here all of the options from Film Lab, how they've all been converted and looking at those. Uh, I've gone in, I can, you know, you can, again, maybe post-produce it a little bit. Film Lab is, you know, they kind of, it's supposed to be a super simple program, so it doesn't supposed to do a whole lot. Um, so you can kind of go in here. Whenever they don't, it's mostly a conversion program. You kind of expect to have to do a little bit of work on the backside. Uh, um, but, uh, sure, maybe a little better. But that said, like, I don't know, it's still, like I said, it just feels very vibey and not true film. Which is, I mean, it's it it could look it looks it's fun, um, but just like not the high quality version that I'm looking for, and definitely nothing that like I could deliver to a client, and especially if you, and especially at the price point that they're asking for, fifty dollars a year or two hundred dollars for a lifetime, um, that's kind of a lot for something that I, I just I don't know I'm very unimpressed by. 
Uh, I do believe that they are giving out licenses with people who buy, um, what's it called? Negative supply equipment. Um, so that's, if, if it's free, play with it and stuff. And maybe if that's your vibe, but uh, this is, it's just not up to the professional standards that I would be looking for. So yeah, I don't know. I come, I'm coming through all these and I'm trying to give a lot of offers. I'm trying to give, give looks to those things and nothing besides Lightroom, nothing really lives up to what I think it needs to be. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers.